Hi, this is Erin from the Etsy shop GameCrafts, and this is part three of creating a pattern using PC Stitch to import and export, or print. This video assumes you have already prepared your image for importing. If you haven't, you can check out part one. One of the nice things about PC Stitch is you don't have to import from a saved file, you can just import from the clipboard. So I'm just going to copy this image and then bring up PC Stitch and import. You can import from a file if you want, but use the picture on the clipboard is what I do the most often. So size, it defaults to 100 pixels wide, which would stretch out your image. You can click to show the preview here and you see it's making it way grainy and weird. So PC Stitch is nice in that it shows you what your original size is right here. So I can say 26 wide, it adjusts the 30 for me because it has this checked, and you can go over to Floss. While it says maximum colors is 100, it won't use 100 if it doesn't need that many. You can set it down if you're trying to use fewer colors on a more complicated image, you can set it to like 20. Um, but for this one, we'll just leave it at 100 because it's only going to use 4. You can change what type of thread you're using. There are lots of options here. Um, so we'll stick with DMC Stranded Cotton. That's their regular thread. And here's your pattern. To zoom in here, it has a plus magnifying glass. And it has similar options to KG Chart that you can show uh, different types of real looking stitches or symbols or no background or just background. So you can choose however you want to view your pattern. Uh, let's go right now with symbols. Um, down here is your palette. It shows you what colors it chose. 606 is a really bright orangey red. Um, if you remember KG chart, if you watched part two, chose 946 I think for this color red so don't rely on the pattern to choose your colors for you if you look at 606 and you're like man that is just neon orange I don't want to use that uh, you can choose more of a brick red I chose in the other video 900 so to replace colors here you can click it and drag it on top and just say replace it and on the screen it pretty much looks the same but in person I think this red would be a much more Mario looking red than the fluorescent one um, but that's kind of your personal preference I would take your pattern the picture of your pattern when you go to buy your thread so you can hold it up and see is this color really what I want because the colors can be misleading on the screen you really want to pick one that looks best and don't say well it says you know, 606, so that's what it has to be. It's just doing its best guess at picking the colors, so rely on your eye. If you think something else looks better, go for that. Uh, for the background, we don't actually want to stitch all this blue, that's just what was in the original image. So you can right click and remove. Are you sure you want to remove all these? Yes. And there you go. If you look at the symbols, we've just got our normal guy here to export to PDF or to print you can go to print you'll choose if you want to make sure your pattern fits on one page you can say right here fit it to one page if you know how big you want to actually print your grid you can use that one um, here it's important if I printed it like it is this would print it black and white with just the symbols only so I like to print symbols over color so it looks exactly like this picture if you're going to actually print onto paper, you may prefer to print the symbols only. The information sheet will give you extra information about the pattern. You can put on here to show the stitch count or the number of skeins used, um, whatever you'd like to see. Let's preview that. So you can see, if I zoom in a bit, it already gives you your legend on each page, so you may not even want to print this information sheet. Um, but you may if you want to see how many skeins you need to buy of each. For this small pattern, you only need a tenth of a skein, so you could 
get along with almost just scraps. To print it or save to PDF, you will select, instead of your regular printer, I have Adobe installed so I can print straight to Adobe, but if you don't, you can download Cute PDF for free and that's, you install it as a printer and then you choose that and when you print to that, it actually will prompt you to save a PDF file. So I can call this one Mario 2 and then I have my saved PDF. If you save your PC Stitch file, it'll be the extension .pat. PC Stitch is paid software, it's not downloadable for free, but I think it's worth it. It has a lot of extra options that uh, KG Chart doesn't have, and it's nice to just have an alternative for color selections, as you'll see when I import this next image. So here's the one we made. Let's change the width to 140 as it says the original is. You can see the preview over here. And a really nice feature of PC Stitch is when you switch over to floss, if you want to limit the color count, you can see the preview without actually creating the pattern. So let's take it down to like 20 so you can see what that looks like. So obviously that's probably too few colors for this image unless you're going for a really artistic take on it. You can even go down as low as like five if you want a really Andy Warhol looking pattern. But uh, if you want it to keep it more realistic, let's go up to 60, which is what we did in the KG chart pattern. And you can see it's a lot more natural looking skin tones, not as much green in the grays as KG chart had. So it, I just typically prefer the color selection here. Um, if we go even a few more colors, let's go up to 80. Adds a little bit more pink tones into the face. Um, so we can go with this. Select OK. And now you see all the colors in your chart are down here. You can zoom in with the plus tool and you can change to see just symbols, symbols with color, X's, kind of a imitation textured stitch and get rid of the grid if you'd like. This uh, textured stitch is a really nice way to take uh, screenshots of a pattern because it looks very realistic to how it will look when it's stitched. Um, to erase this background, I'm going to turn on the symbols for a second so you can see what you're erasing. You can use the selection tool for large areas, and then you can use, I'm going to turn the grid back on too, just because it helps me see what I'm doing. Uh, let's, go, let's go to just solid colors. So as you're erasing, if you notice, I'm kind of, for this example, leaving the edge because you may not know how much to erase. Um, I would suggest not doing this because now you have kind of an outline around your picture that's left over from whatever color background used to be there. But now that you re removed this background, you don't need these transition pieces anymore. So I get rid of everything down to the true color. So that way, no matter what color background I stitch this on, it looks like it's supposed to be there and not like it has a weird halo effect around it. Another good thing to do is turn on the uh, symbols every now and then. Oops, not that one. This one. So you can make sure if there's something, especially down here where we have a white background, if I was just looking at the colors, it would be hard to tell if I've erased all of the background here. So you can turn the symbols back on so you can make sure you're erasing all of the white space and not leaving anything behind. I'm going to skip ahead in the video so you don't have to watch me do all this. The reason I didn't try to get rid of all this background in the uh, image editing software is I would have to erase it anyway, it would put it in as white 
even if I go through and delete it all. And more than likely, your image has white in it, so you're not going to want to select all whites and delete them. Uh, you'll have to go through and touch it up by hand anyway. So that's why it's not a big deal to erase your background before you get into this software. All right, I finished erasing all the background. So we'll zoom out, make sure I didn't miss anything. That all looks good. Um, I'm going to zoom out a little bit more and crop this image. Another nice thing about PC Stitch is you can, after selecting an area, you can move where that selection is. So you don't have to get it right on the edges of your picture the first time you drag. Once you have it where you want it, you can crop to edit box. You don't have to do it, but it's nice to be able to find the center of your picture where this red mark is is exactly the center so if you don't have empty space around it it makes it easier to center it on your fabric and now to export it or print rather let's print I'll select cute PDF as my printer so I can save it as a PDF for this one um, let's try it as symbols instead of symbols over color remember symbols over color is what this screen looks like here. Um, symbols is going to be just the black and white version, which is nice if you're printing it out for some extra clarity. Um, let's not do the information sheet for this one. And we can preview what this is going to look like. And then looking at this, I think automatically, oh, I wish I had done it landscape so that it didn't take so many pages. Uh, actually, it fitted onto two, which is not bad. I'm okay with that. We'll leave it there. So we'll close the preview and print. Here it brings up the dialog. Another thing you can do to get rid of extra colors in your palette that you probably erased when you took out the background, you can right click right here and choose palette tools. Uh, let me move this up so you can see the menu clear unused entries. There were only a couple, but sometimes it's really nice to get rid of extra colors you're not using. Again, this was Aaron from the Etsy shop Game Crafts. If you missed them, check out part one, preparing your image, and part two, creating patterns with KG chart. Thanks for watching.